Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a video called Brands I Want to Try in 2017 Revisited. So many of these videos pop up and I actually did film a Brands I Want to Try in 2017 video. So I went back and watched it and really thought about whether I tried these brands or not and I thought it would be fun to go back and talk about them. I've seen so many videos where people now do like revisited so they go back on their memories and comment on whether things are the same. Like I love watching haul revisited videos because it's fun to see like what people bought and what their actual thoughts ended up being. So let me know if you guys have any suggestions for videos as well. I actually have a giveaway going on right now. I'm going to link it down in the description box. And basically in that video, all you have to do to enter to win the Tarte Clay Play palette is to leave me a comment with a video idea that you would like to see on my channel. So anyway, enough blabbering. Let's go ahead and check out some of the brands I wanted to try out in 2017. And I'm going to tell you if I did or did not try them. Okay, so I made a list on my phone and the first brand I mentioned was Cogendo. The reason I had heard about that brand was because a lot of YouTubers at one time were raving about their Aqua foundation and I was so curious and there were a few times this year where I almost purchased it but there's only six shades of this foundation and I feel like I'm going to be the shade 143 I think is a shade or 134 or something like that but it's like a 60 something dollar foundation. I don't do very well picking out my shade with foundations online so I decided to save myself the energy and the hurt and just pass on Cogendo because they are not tan girl friendly from what I can tell. If you've tried the foundation and you are my skin tone let me know what color works for you but since I wasn't comfortable picking it out. I just did not try the brand Cogendo at all this past year. So the next brand that was on my list was Zoeva and I had just heard so many YouTubers talk about what a great brand Zoeva was and I was like really interested because so many people hype up their makeup brushes and their eyeshadow palettes and they are based in Europe, I think maybe in the UK or something like that. So it's very affordable if you're in Europe. but to get it in the US, it's pretty pricey. So I was gonna pay for shipping. So I decided to, you know, go crazy and pick up three palettes from them. This was like a set that you can buy on Zoeva's website. And of course, like I couldn't pick between these three palettes. So I was like, let me just take advantage. And this cost me 75 bucks. And it's so pathetic because I feel like I've been trying so many eyeshadow palettes that the only one I've tried is the Coco Blend palette. This is like one of their really famous palettes and I don't really like it. I really don't see what the hype is, which is why I haven't even reviewed these palettes yet on my channel. It's a goal of mine for 2018 to actually get reviews up on these guys. And so like I said, like this one I haven't even touched or swatched. This is the Blanc Fusion palette. And then we have the Car Caramel uh, what is this one called? Caramel Melange or something. So very pretty, but I feel like these are definitely not super tan girl friendly. But I will test these out and give you guys my full opinion. So I did actually technically get something from Zoeva and I will continue to try these out and give you guys my thoughts once I have some figured out. So my next brand to try out in 2017 was Artist Couture. This was another brand that was hyped up on YouTube and so I was really really excited to try the brand. So I decided to pick up one of their Diamond Glow Powders. I don't think they have a ton of products so I think they're most well known for these Diamond Glow Powders and I got the shade Gold Digger. So Everyone on YouTube just makes this look so beautiful and they just like dust it on and when I got it I was like this is such a hot mess like basically there's like a sifter and all the powder comes out and it's basically like glitter like do you see that it just falls off and I don't know I just don't like loose highlighting powders that's what I've decided like look at this mess so I'm definitely selling this. If you guys want to go ahead and check me out on Poshmark, you can try this out for yourself. I've really priced everything very reasonably on my Poshmark, especially because this is like basically unused and I don't like it. So if somebody else wants to try it, you sure can feel free to do that. So I won't be purchasing anything else from Artist Couture. 
I'm just not interested and I'm so sick of like YouTubers and Instagrammers hyping up their friends brands and then like me being an idiot and just buying it so not impressed with artist couture at all the next brand I wanted to try out was Saucebox, and unfortunately I didn't end up trying them I was almost gonna buy one of their eyeshadow palettes during Black Friday because they had some sales but honestly their palettes just were not anything new from what I had in my collection so I ended up passing on them and I really don't see myself buying anything from them in the future unless they come out with something really really unique the next brand I wanted to try was Luxie brushes and a lot of people talk about them they actually are now sold on Nordstrom.com and I did see some of the brushes in person as well when I was in California visiting and uh, I don't know they're just so expensive it's so hard for me I really like to use affordable brushes and I've just been so into brush sets lately so I picked up some from Tarte I got some Sony Akashic brushes so I feel like I'm set with brushes for a while and so I didn't pick anything up from Luxie Beauty this year. So the next brand I was dying to try in 2017 was Elsie Cosmetics because a lot of people rave about this brand. I know Nishani, Total Makeup Junkie, she loves this foundation so I was so so curious to try them and I think Desi Perkins talks about Elsie. This brand was started I think by a YouTuber or an Instagrammer, I don't know anything about her but I decided to pick up some of the products so I have a video testing out these products. I will link it up in the cards if you guys are interested in watching that video. But honestly, like, I bought the Minimalist palette. I already sold that on my Poshmark. I was not impressed. And this foundation, mm, I mean, it's not that great. And it's so hard for me to match my shade online, too. I feel like I could have done a better job with this color I selected. I got the shade, oh, I got the shade Honey. And these products are so expensive. And I get it because it's an indie brand. And they have to make their money, too, because they're not being invested in by big big companies but yeah this micro silk foundation just not that impressed by it and the minimalist palette I already decluttered so definitely check out that video if you guys are interested in trying out LC Cosmetics the next brand I wanted to try was Kevin Aquan I don't know if I'm sad to report that I didn't try it but I just it's just again one of those brands that I don't feel like is very tan girl friendly so if you are of like a medium to tan to deep skin tone, can you guys tell me what products you like from Kevin Aquan? Maybe I'll put it on my Sephora VIB sale list for the future. But I didn't try anything out from him and I'm okay with it because a lot of the like the contour shades and stuff just look so powdery and just mm, just doesn't appeal to me. And I feel like he is really well known for his contour shades. Other than that, like the eyeshadows are very unappealing. Those like big palettes like face and eye palettes he comes out with are also very unappealing so I've just completely passed on that brand. Uh, another brand that was on my list was Sonia Kashuk and I actually tried I think her foundation I'm gonna insert a picture of it because I don't have it anymore was not very impressed I didn't try any of the eyeshadow palettes or any other makeup but I did pick up some of her brushes because she has a lot of really affordable like brush kits. This is actually also Sony Kashuk this brush holder. She has a set out right now that's like marble handled and I really like her brushes. They're, they've gotten a lot softer. I picked this up a few years ago from Sony Kashuk and these brushes were pretty bad. They were very scratchy but her new brushes are a lot softer. So. I was really glad to have found an affordable brush line at Target and I would definitely recommend the brushes but I don't know anything about her makeup so that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Next brand that was on my list was Best Damn Beauty by Nicole Guerrero. I know she has like a lip mask and like I think like a face moisturizer, a few different like skincare products is what I caught on and people like swear by her Best Damn Lip Mask but I just didn't really get around to it and I'm kind of over supporting really 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 big YouTubers. I mean I like some of her Halloween videos but I don't really wa watch her that often so I yeah just kind of not really interested in her brand. Um, next brand I wanted to try was Butter London's makeup line and unfortunately did not try Butter London either. 
It was just one of those things where nothing really appealed to me. I've tried their nail polish is pretty good, very expensive, but they had those like jelly eyeshadows. I'll put up a picture here because I can't remember what they were called. The glazing something. It looked really cool and all the bloggers were like really pushing it, but uh, just not interested. I don't really, I like powder eyeshadows. I don't know. So didn't buy anything from them. Or the one before the last is Persona Cosmetics and that is also a YouTuber. I think her name is Sona Gasparian and a lot of Instagrammers and YouTubers rave about her eyeshadow palette. I feel like I should pick it up but it looks so basic. I'm gonna pop a picture in the corner so you guys can see it yourselves. And I, I see it every time I get an Ulta coupon. I'm like should I buy it? But then I was like mm, because they did start selling it on Ulta's website so that would be a good way for me to try it and return it if I didn't want it, but honestly, I'm just not interested. So I'm going to pass on that brand as well. And then the last brand I had on my list to try out for 2017 is the skincare brand called The Ordinary. And I actually did pick up some things from them, but here's the thing with skincare. I'm not very good with skincare, so I have not ventured into trying those two products out yet. I bought their primer and then I think the bu the buffet serum and I'm just so freaked out that it'll make me break out that I haven't gotten into either of those products yet. So yeah, I know I sound crazy, but it's, it's tough with skincare because you don't want to break out your skin, you know? So that is everything that I had on my list of 2017, the brands I wanted to try out. I wanted to try and make a list for 2018, but I feel like I've tried so many brands and I tried a lot of indie brands out too this year. Like I have Ace Beauté, so many just different ones. Like Colored Rain was not on my list, but I actually tried them. So yeah, I did try some other brands that even weren't on my list and some brands that aren't really talked about. Sometimes I love finding like indie brands on Instagram and stuff like that. So if you guys have any recommendations for brands that you love that I haven't talked about on my channel, definitely let me know in the comments. I'm so interested, especially cruelty free brands. I'm really, really curious to hear what some of your favorite brands might be so I can try those out in 2018 and maybe do a video like this. I just couldn't think of anything. The only other brand I can think of that I want to try is Ciate, but again, just nothing is really speaking to me. I almost want to like force myself to buy the Chloe Morello Part 2 palette. And I know Makeup Struggles loves the Part 1 palette, but again, it's like pinks and greens. I'll put up a picture in the corner so you guys know what I'm talking about. And it just doesn't appeal to me. I'm just like, mm. I saw it in person when I was in California, and it it was fine, but I'm just like, mm. But it's on sale now for $37, so I'm like, well, now's your chance, but I'm still not into it. And one of my resolutions for 2018 is to not just buy makeup just for the sake of buying makeup. So I think I'm going to stick to my guns with that one and pass on Ciate as well until they come out with something a little more exciting for me. Super curious to know what brands you guys think I should try out in 2018. So if you have any suggestions, let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me. I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.